Hi everyone. So before we start to talk about the water cycle, I want to make sure that you understand how the water cycle has the three states of matter. So matter is everything around you is made up of molecules and they're usually in three forms, gas, liquid, and the solid. And this song that I have today will help you to remember those three states of matter. And it's sung to the tune of the farmer and the devil. There's matter over here, there's matter over there, liquid, solid, or a gas, there's matter everywhere. A solid keeps its shape, it doesn't separate. What you see is what you get, a solid keeps its shape. Gas is in the air, you can't see it, but it's there. It flows and blows right through your nose and fits in anywhere. When you melt a solid down, a liquid can be found. It's wet and moves wherever there's room and spills and splashes too. So it goes through those three states of matter. With a solid, it keeps the shape that it's in, okay? So your body is the shape that is in. If you poke it, it's just going to stay the same way, all right? A liquid, if you go ahead and spill it, it's wet and it moves all over. It'll run across the table and just go any which way. And gas, like I said, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't, and it fits anywhere. So if you captured it in a jar, it would just take the shape of a jar. Now this is important for the water cycle because for rain or snow to happen, you're going to have evaporation and condensation happening, and that's changing from a liquid to a vapor gas, and then from a vapor gas back to a liquid. All right, so you're working with two of the states of matter. So I found this wonderful diagram on the website, Two Teaching Mommies, and it explains the water cycle. So first we start off with the sun during the day pulling moisture up from the ground. So where the grass is, where ponds and lakes are, it's so warm that it's pulling the moisture of the liquid water that's in a pond or a lake or a river or on your grass. Think about when you go outside in the morning during the spring or summer and there's dew on the grass. That is the moisture that the sun's gonna pull up. And when the sun pulls that water, that liquid water up into the air, it's called evaporation. All right, so think of evaporation like a sponge that's dry that's put into water. Let me show you what that looks like. The second part of the water cycle is the moisture is pulled up by the sun and when it pulls it up into the air, it starts to form clouds. So all the clouds you see is the moisture that's been pulled up into the sky. That is called condensation. When all the moisture has been pulled up into the sky and it starts to come together. So, moisture will fall back to the ground as rain, snow, or ice from those clouds that have come together through condensation. 
Now we get rain when it's above 32 degrees. Now after 32 degrees, and maybe between 30 degrees, just a couple degrees difference, we could get ice or snow, depending on how the temperature is changing as that moisture comes back to the ground. And we're gonna see that type of moisture during our colder months. So say November, December, January, February, maybe a little even into March. So once that moisture falls back to the ground, into the rivers, into the ponds, onto the ground, it's back on the earth again. And the water cycle will start all over because that precipitation, that water is back on the earth. So then we start all over again with the sun pulling moisture out from the ground and it evaporates up into the air. And remember, all that moisture is going to come together and form clouds, and that's called condensation. And then it falls back down again. And once it falls back down to the earth again, it starts all over. It's a never-ending cycle. I have an experiment to show you that will show you liquid water, which is our moisture, and follow along with your adult, and you can go ahead and see condensation and evaporation happening. So I'm going to do something with weather today, and I thought I would talk about rain. Now we know what rain is. It's water that's coming down from the sky out of the clouds. Do you ever wonder how that water gets up into the clouds? It's all a part of the water cycle. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the water cycle with an experiment that I'm going to do with you today for evaporation. So water can be in three states. It can be a liquid, like you get out of your tap, so you can see it. Or it can be a solid, like an ice cube. Or it can be a gas. And I'm gonna show you an experiment that you would need an adult at home to help you with. You cannot do it by yourself because we're going to be working with the range and fire. If you have a gas stove, if you have an electric one, you're still going to be working with something that gets very hot and can burn you. So you need to ask your adult at home to help you with this experiment. So what you want to do is to get a pot. Get a measuring cup and fill it with a cup of water out of your faucet. And once you do that, you're gonna pour that cup of water into your pot. Right now, that water is in a liquid form. You can see it moving all around in there, just like in a pool or a sink or a bathtub, a bucket, anything that can hold water. Now, this is in a liquid state right now. I'm gonna turn it into a gas, all right? And I'm gonna do that by using a flame on my stove. So, out in nature, we can make rainwater that hits the ground evaporate, be absorbed back into the air by having heat and we get our heat source from the sun. But my heat source today for our experiment is this hot flame. So I'm going to bring this water to a boil. So that means the water in the side's going to start to bubble. That's when it's gonna to start to turn into a gas. But in order for that to happen, I have to put a lid on my pot. We're gonna take a look at this. Now that I have that on there, you can see the steam on the lid. Do you see it's not perfectly clear anymore? There's moisture in there. The water's starting to evaporate. So we're gonna let this get nice and warm and 
the water is going to change from a liquid into a gas. And when it does that, it's going to collect on the lid, the gas water. And it's going to get so heavy that when it comes together, it's going to drip. And it's going to act like rain. So the evaporation on the top of the lid is just what clouds do. All the water from the grounds being pulled back up into the air by the warmth of the sun and all the water starts to gather together and that forms clouds. And when the clouds get so full of gas water, it starts to rain because it can't hold it anymore. Now look at the lid now. You can see all the little droplets on top of the glass lid because that water is rising due to the heat, turning into a gas, and as it cools off, it's turning back into water. Do you see how it's running on that lid? That's exactly what happens in a cloud. I'm gonna put that back on there and see if we can't see this start to steam. Oh, do you see the steam starting to come out now? It's really hot. That's the water turning into gas. Now I have a little pore spout on my pan so you can see all that water turning into a gas. So when all this gas in the air fills up into a cloud, it's gonna come back down as rain. That's how rain forms during warm weather. And do you know what happens if this water cycle happens during the winter months when it's cold and the temperature is 32 degrees or below? It turns into snow because that liquid freezes on the way down. That's why we have snow in the winter, because it's so cold. Thanks for trying this experiment with me today. Thank you to TwoTeachingMommies.com, CoolKidsFacts.com, Heather Shrimp for the song States of Matter on TeachersPayTeachers.com, and thanks to everyone that watched this video. I hope it helped you to understand the water cycle.